Hi there. We're until rain. We're until rain. We're until rain. Hi, we're until rain. We're until rain. And you're watching Live Prog. Live Prog. Live Prog. Live Prog. Live Prog. Live prog. friends, welcome to Life Prog and welcome to a new review. And we're gonna kick this one off with a short cartoon. Ooh, a piece of candy. 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 Now you're probably wondering why am I watching a little bit of Family Guy on Life Prog? That has everything to do with the album I have in this review. And that is this one, Dawn of Destiny Fear. It is the fifth album of this band from Germany and FEAR stands for Forgotten, Enslaved, Admired, Released. And yes, it is a concept album. And what a concept album this is! It is power metal. And what power metal this is! Unbelievable. I mean, I was blown away. And there comes in the link with that cartoon. When I started listening to this album, I received a digital promo about a month before this album was being released. And I started listening to it, and I started listening to the first song, and I thought, wow, this is great, I want to hear more. And I started listening to the next song, and I thought, wow, this is even greater, I want more. And I started listening and listening, and I just couldn't stop listening until the album was done. And that is exactly what happens to James Wood, because in my case, each song was a piece of candy. And by the time I had all the pieces of candies, I was captured by this band, by this album, Fear. Forgotten, enslaved, admired, released. album. I have been listening to this as much as possible. I have been playing this album with headphones on. I have been playing this album with the volume as loud as possible until my amplifier got to the end where I couldn't play it any louder. My neighbors will love me for that. This is a fantastic album. As I said, it is the fifth album of the German band Dawn of Destiny. But it's the first one I hear. I am not familiar with the previous work uh, at all. I'm not going to mention it, I'm just going to talk to you about this album because this one has really knocked me down, has blown me away, has left me speechless uh, and left me wanting more. This is such an amazing album, 13 songs and maybe the title in the way they brought it gave it away a little bit, but this is a concept album in four parts. Each letter of the title, uh, each word of the title, uh, brings in uh, a scene of this story. Now, in a nutshell, I'm going to try to, you know, not give away everything, but give you an idea what this album is all about. And I think the artwork definitely tells you a little bit of what you can expect. It's very dark uh, artwork. The story is about a little girl called Eve. Uh, she's in a wheelchair because of a car accident. That car accident was caused by her mother, who's gone, and her father is gone as well. And she's all alone in, I think, a sort of orphanage home, or it doesn't say really. Uh, and she's very sad, of course. Um, she meets someone there, a boy called Ben, who has this gift that if he touches someone else, he feels what they feel. Something happens, something really terrible, and, and ugh, when you read it, the story, it, it gives you chills to your spine, but uh, something bad happens. Uh, this Ben avenges this girl, Eve. They start a relationship together, uh, well, and then we have a really dramatic ending of this album. That's in a nutshell what you get. And I must say, um, the story was written by uh, Jens Faber, a bass player of the band. And, uh, you know, he wrote everything, the music, the lyrics, and also come up with the story. And I gotta say, I'm really impressed by the way he did that. Because you start to think, when you start reading the story, you start to think which direction it will go. But he took a completely different turn and went a completely different way. And that is something I like. This is not a standard 
tale, this is not a standard album, far from it. Musically, I mean, wow, I, I can't even begin to describe how awesome this album is. I could spend an hour just talking about that first track, and then we have 12 tracks to go. So every song has something in it that will really make you listen to it. Um, and there, there even there are a couple of standout songs in it, but when you start listening to the album, you really get sucked into the whole mood the album is bringing out. It is passionate, it is filled with emotion, it is, uh, it's a really captivating story, very intense, very powerful, but oh so beautiful. It is metal, but at times it is very accessible, at times it is almost catchy, you almost have these moments when you start to sing along, especially in a track like No Hope for the Healing or um, And This Nightmare, those are songs you will start to sing along even though the, these are not the happiest songs in the story, I must say. Um, the band is fantastic. It's just four musicians bringing this music and we have one singer, Jeanette Scherf. The funny part is she has recently joined Dawn of Destiny, so she's very new, but she has a fantastic voice. Especially, and that is the track that, that really brought out the most goosebumps on my body, um, Innocence Killed. Wow, the way she sings that, and that is the start of the second part, the enslaved part, the part where something really bad and nasty happens to Eve, her character, but the way she sings that song and the way that it is accompanied by the music is so intense and so beautiful, wow. And, and that is just one song. I mean, it is metal uh, and it's, the, the, it is a very vocal album. That is something I like very much. I mean, musically, phenomenal. That's, I have no other word for it. Phenomenal, fantastic band, crunchy, capturing uh, massive guitar riffs in it, solos in it, great keyboards and orchestrations, great rhythm section. All right, that's out of the way. Let's go to the vocal part because that is something I really uh, love about this album, they have really done something amazing with that because you have the main vocalist, which is Jeanette Scherf, and she has a fantastic voice not this typical soprano voice, but more a rock voice, a powerful voice, uh, but also be able to sing the more you know softer, delicate, emotional parts in the music. Uh, and at the same time, you know, she can be quite angry and powerful as well. Then we have Jens Faber, who also plays well a double vocal part in this album because. Uh, he adds, he portrays also one of the characters, but at the same time he also adds some grunts to the music. And these grunts are not over the top, but they're really nice and at the right places. And, and sometimes, I mean, in the first track, when uh, and with Silence Comes the Fear, there's almost, it's almost this catchy kind of grunts, where he grunts like wheelchair, wheelchair, you know? When you listen to that song, it, it really sticks in your head and you won't get it out of it. I really love that very much. But there is more when it comes to the vocals, because, you know, given what I've told you now, this should be reason for you to run to the store and buy this album, because, no question, this album will get a must-have stamp on it, because it is really amazing. But on top of that, they add elements that make it even better, because they have two guest vocalists. In the first track, and with silence comes the fear, we have Mats Leven uh, portraying the father of Eve, uh, and just in that one song, and, and he's a, uh, an amazing singer. I know him from Jupiter Society, but he also sings with Candle Mass, with Tyrion, with Ingrid Malmsteen. Uh, he does a fantastic part in this, really heavy vocals here, uh, and he gives out a kind of the running theme throughout the album. Um, which is also the title of the last song of the album, To Live Is To Suffer, which basically means, you know, as long as you live, you won't be happy. And that is the basic idea behind the whole story, you know? Two people trying to make something out of life, which is very difficult because every time something happens that will make them suffer. 
So in the, in the end, it's a very tragic story, but it's brought to music really beautiful. Second guest musician, and I gotta be honest, that really blew my top. I mean, Mudslave is already amazing. This band without the guest musicians is already fantastic. And then they have the Mountain King himself, John Oliver, uh, playing the role of the torturer, of the guy who does the evil things to Eve in the track No Hope for the Healing. He does his familiar Savitar screams in it. Um, also, when you listen to that song, it feels like a Savitar song. That is a mood that I picked up throughout the album a little bit, um, but that song in particular stands out, and that is probably the highest highlight of this album. That song is so fantastic. Uh, and, and it's amazing you know, that they managed to get these two fantastic guys to add their parts to this album. Musically, when I think of the Savitar influence that I hear, there's another influence I hear in the third part, Admired, which is the more cheerful part. There are a few songs, uh, Finally and Then I Found You, that gave me the idea of, of this is something that, that, for example, Meatloaf could have done as well. That Jim Steinman idea with the piano in it. Um, and in essence, if I wanted to try and describe the, the sound of this band to you, I would say, Blend Camelot, Savitage and Jim Steinman, blend them together and the musical result you get will be something in the vein of this. But this one is really fantastic. There's of course a very thick booklet with this album, there has to be, and of course there's also, well, as you can see here, there are lyrics and the story. And I, I started reading the story when I started preparing for this review. Before that, I just listened to the album. Um, and I gotta say, uh, it, was, it was a great album, but when I started reading the lyrics as well, it, it became really intense because then I started to understand what it was all about. You know, that, that gives it an extra dimension. Here we have Jeanette Scherf, the singer of the band. And well, here we have two others. Jens Faber and Veit Offenbach. And this gentleman, I'm not gonna risk mispronouncing his name, so you can uh, read it yourself, the keyboard player. Album, um, but I have to make one confession though. I found a, a bit of a, I found a bit of a mistake. They left out one page in this booklet because the lyrics of the song "Prayer" are not in the booklet. Silly thing, of course, but hey, guys, I just had to mention it. This is a really fantastic album, and given the fact that my scale of grades goes from one to ten, I'd say. It's pretty obvious what I'm gonna grant this album. A 10, of course. I mean, I really, 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 really love this one very much. I think it's a fantastic album. It's powerful, it's emotional, it's passionate. It is cinematic, it is, wow. It is captivating. It is an album that once you listen to it, you won't stop listening to it. I promise you, when you listen to this album, you will love it. It is really fantastic and it is, is the most interesting metal album that I heard maybe in all my life. I heard a lot of metal albums, but I don't think there has been one power metal album that got me as excited as this one. So, well, um, I think it is pretty clear how I feel about this album. Dawn of Destiny, forgotten, enslaved, admired, released. I'm gonna end it here. You know, I have nothing more to say to you about this album. Just that I can repeat again what I said listen to this album, buy this album, you will definitely love it. Thank you for watching and I hope you will see me at a new review.